Finding leaks in any refrigeration system can be very frustrating. Let's cover some tips to help you be able to find refrigerant leaks in this condensing unit. And sometimes they're easy to find because they're big leaks, and other times they're quite difficult to find because they'll be very small leaks or multiple small leaks. What I like to do is start with the simplest thing. And one of the most common places for us to have refrigerant leaks is going to be here at these valve cores. Where we hook our gauges up, that valve right there is notorious for leaking. What you want to do though is make sure that you're doing it the right way when you're testing it. Bubbles are a great way to test it. The problem is we do not want you putting these bubbles right up inside of that connector. Because what it's going to do is either contaminate the system as we put refrigerant in or contaminate your hoses and your equipment as you're taking refrigerant out. So we don't want any of that contamination. A trick is using a valve cap and taking that valve cap and just barely screwing that valve cap on, just barely, just catching one thread. Now we can put a leak detector all around that valve cap. If we see bubbles coming out around that valve cap, we know there's a really high chance that we have a refrigerant leak on those Schrader cores. Then we get our valve core removal tool. We can change out those Schrader valves, those valve cores. That's a simple thing to do to make sure we're not leaking. Now, another thing is the valve caps themselves. We want to have our Schrader cores not leaking at all, but we also make sure our valve caps protected. This is a nice brass valve cap. It has a rubber O-ring inside. These work really, really great, but make sure it still has that rubber O-ring. I've seen many times a system low on charge where our Schrader valve is leaking and we had no or a broken O-ring inside of our valve caps. And even worse are those plastic ones. Those plastic ones are notorious for leaking. So anytime I see a plastic one, I take it off, I go ahead and put a brass one in its place to make sure we don't have any issues. Now the exception to this rule is if it has those hex head caps. If it has the hex head caps, those don't have any kind of a rubber O-ring in it, but I still like to use a type of nylog on there when I'm putting them on because it's basically a flare style fitting. When you put those caps on, you thread them in finger tight, then you go ahead and take a wrench and they actually have a torque spec, but you can actually torque those back down. The next thing we look for a leak is going to be these caps right here. These are notorious for leaking, especially when you get a helper that braces this in the first time and they overheat this valve. Notorious for leaking, leaking all the time. So we can take our leak detector. What we can do is spray that leak detector around at these caps and see if it's leaking there. And I see them leaking all the time. So what I like to do is take these caps off, go ahead and put some Nylog on it. I have no affiliation with Nylog whatsoever. It's a product that I've used and it saved me a ton of time. This Nylog is made of refrigerant oil. They have two different types, one for PUE oil and one for mineral oil. And by putting Nylog on there, it makes a nice good seal that's easy to take on and put back off. They make another product that's a type of leak lock product, and that product works. It has some applications I use it for, but whatever you do, do not use that product. Do not use any kind of a thread or leak lock on these valve caps right here because the next person coming along is going to hate you for it because they're going to have a hard time getting these caps off, and it's also going to get all up into the threads of their low loss fittings or their valve fittings, and that's going to be a problem. I don't even like to use it on these caps. I like to use the Nylog because it seals better and it allows me to take it off easier in the future. So some simple things like that, it's a great starting point. Now, while we're already looking at this point, let's see what else is nearby. A lot of times you're gonna see a liquid line filter dryer located right outside. That liquid line filter dryer is made of metal and it's out in the weather. So if it's outside in the weather, you're looking at rust building up on those. Now, the ideal location is to put that before the metering device inside the house so you don't have to worry about rust and it's filtering the refrigerant before it hits that metering device. However, you see a lot of them on the outside. So start with, starting with that's a great point get my electronic leak detector, start seeing if it's leaking in refrigerant. Then you can take your choice of bubbles, put it on there and see if you have any bubbles forming anywhere on that liquid line filter dryer. Now you gotta remember that some units come with liquid line filter dryers inside the condensing unit. So if you see a liquid line filter dryer outside, and you see another liquid line filter dryer inside, that should automatically be a red flag. That's already gonna be a restriction, even if they're both in good shape. So this is gonna be the one that gets dirty, and this one really won't be doing anything. So if you see two liquid line filter dryers, that's gonna be a red flag, and make sure there's not a third one inside, because I've seen three on one unit before. It's funny, because the customer called, because the last company kept having to change compressors. But this filter dryer was completely stopped up. It was also leaking refrigerant, so you had two big problems all in one. So that's a pretty easy fix. The other thing to think about is a suction line filter dryer. If we think about that suction line, the suction line is running below dew point most of the time. In other words, there's condensation building up on the suction line. Well, that's a metal filter dryer and you're always in a wet condition. So that suction line filter dryer is notorious for leaking. So we're gonna make sure that we check the suction line filter dryer. Also that we check for pressure drop across that suction line filter dryer. 
And if it's a 410A system, we wanna make sure that it hasn't stayed there for more than 72 hours. If it's been there more than 72 hours, most manufacturers recommend against that. So if we see that selection line filter dryer still there, that's another red flag. So if it's not leaking, when I find a leak, I wanna make sure I take that out of the circuit. So there's some important keys to look for. Now, once we've checked those basic locations, now let's start looking for what else is easy. I look for any kind of an oil leak. So if we see an oil stain on the fins or see an oil stain down low, to me, that's a red flag. Hey, there's oil coming out. And typically on the high side, when you have a high side leak, more times than not, you're gonna see oil coming out with that refrigerant. So when I see an oil stain on the system, that's immediate red flag to me. Whether it's on the fins of the condensing coil or if it's down here at the bottom, like this one has oil on it, to me, that's an immediate red flag. Now, it doesn't mean that there's a leak there. It could simply be on a new system where they manufactured it, they had oil, somebody spilt oil, uh, or where they had a previous leak in there. There's several scenarios. Maybe they were changing the condenser fan motor, they spilt the oil. There's several scenarios. So just because you see oil doesn't mean that it's a leak, but it should immediately be a thought in your mind, I need to check that out. Now, if you found that there's not a leak in that location, you wanna make sure you clean that oil up so the next person, which may be you, doesn't come across that same oil stain and get distracted by it. In this example, you could tell there was a leak here at one time that was been repaired, and they just left the oil and never worried about it. Another thing is, if you're brazing and you hit that oil, it can flare up on you. So cleaning up that oil spots is always a good idea, in my opinion. So once we cover that, let's see what other things we find. We're looking at wiring. Here's all of our wires that come down. This comes down really nice all the way to the compressor, no problems. But a lot of systems have extra wires and sensors in this equipment. And one of the problems is these wires will be rubbing up against some of the copper tubing. And it's crazy to think, but it happens with this insulation. The insulation on these wires will literally put a hole through that harder copper. But just vibrations, it will put a hole straight through that copper piping. So I always wanna to check to make sure all of our wires are free and clear. Anytime I'm doing maintenance, doing preventive maintenance in any of my customers' units, I always take that top off and make sure that none of these wires are rubbing anywhere in that system. Now, if it is rubbing, we have two options. We can cable tie the wire together so it's not rubbing against anything. And other snares, we don't really have a choice. It's gonna be right up next to a wire somewhere. So what we can do is put a piece of tape, preferably a type of foam tape, against this copper tubing, and then we can cable tie that wire straight to that copper. By cable tying both of those together, they're just tightly pushed against each other. So they're not actually moving and rubbing so they can't put a hole in it. Now, if you do that method, you wanna make sure you're not doing it on the discharge, AKA hot gas line, because that line gets Oh yeah, very hot. And so it can still cause a problem with your wiring. So by keeping the wires away from the hot gas line, and if we have to touch one of the piping, we put some insulation between it, cable tie it together so it's a nice tight connection, works wonders. I can't tell you how many leaks I found on wiring, touching and putting holes in copper piping. On the other scenario, you can have some situations to where it actually eats a hole through the insulation and causes a short, where it's a low voltage short or a high voltage short. See lots of people looking for shorts, they can't find them, and it's simply in a low voltage short and maybe the weather's be just right, just the right amount of humidity, but it actually starts shorting out. So those are some key things to look for. Another accessory you see inside these units is gonna be a pressure switch. High pressure switch for the high side, low pressure switch on the low side. With these low pressure switches, you have refrigerant on one side, you have a little diaphragm and a very small seal, and you got the wire on the other side. So over time, these can start to wear out. Vibrations, high pressure, the weather, they can start to leak refrigerant. So by simply putting your leak detector all around these points here, all around the top, can help you find those leaks. I still like to use my electronic leak detector, but to pinpoint where it's at, the bubbles work great. You will need a mirror to be able to look up on this bottom side to see if it's leaking. But these are notorious for leaking. And if you have a leaking or even a bad pressure switch, we never want to bypass these. We want to replace them. And some of these have these really cool connectors on them where we can unscrew them, but a lot of times they don't have any Schrader ports inside of them. So if you unscrew this, all that refrigerant comes out. So once we got that down, we can also look at these little U-bins where all of this tubing going all the way around this condensing unit has these little U-bins all the way through. Each one of those are brazed together. So by taking our electronic leak detector and very slowly starting at the top and we just very slowly go all the way down, it'll help us find where the leak is. But the problem we're gonna have with that is, especially with this unit being located outside, the wind, even a small breeze, can be carrying that refrigerant away. And as we're trying to find the leak, we're having a very hard time finding it especially when we're talking about all these fins covering all that tubing. So we're trying to take this leak detector to go back and forth through all these tubes, and that slight breeze carries the refrigerant away faster than this meter can pick it up. So we do have a solution for that also. You should always have a tarp of some type in your service van. You can take the tarp and wrap the tarp all the way around the condensing unit over the top so we're blocking as much of that wind as possible. By blocking that wind, you allow that refrigerant to 
pull up inside this unit. And after that refrigerant pulls up inside the unit, your leak detector has a much higher chance of finding and pinpointing where that leak's gonna be. So it's a nice, simple little trick, just wrapping it up with a tarp, it's plastic, whatever it takes so we can find that leak easier. Now in this scenario, this is beautiful because these older style had this access door, you can get to everything. Most all the new ones I've seen, you can only access it from the top unless you're in the commercial realm. So having this access, you won't have that luxury in the field. We have some other things to check. The very bottom side of the compressor, especially when a customer lets leaves built up in here, they've never done maintenance, those leaves will eventually turn into a mulch. Now leaving leaves for one season is probably not gonna be a big deal, but leaving leaves there through the entire life of it will certainly be a big deal because those leaves actually turn to mulch. It actually turns back to dirt. So here you have the metal casing of the compressor touching dirt and moisture all the time. It doesn't take long before we eat all the paint off the bottom of that compressor and now we start rusting out at the bottom of this compressor. Even with the mirror, it's very difficult to get up in there and it's almost impossible for us to get any kind of bubbles up in the bottom side of that to check it. That's where an electronic leak detector is gonna come in handy. We get all those leaves clear and we start taking our leak detector very carefully all around the bottom and seeing if we can find a refrigerant leak. And while we're doing that, we also wanna check right here where this plug goes through that compressor. If somebody overpressured it, they put too much pressure on the low side, it causes that fuse light connector to fail, to leak. So by taking this cap off and checking around that fuse light connector is important. And also just anywhere you have a connector, anywhere you see a rust spot, anywhere the tubing goes through, over here where the hook is for the compressor, just checking around all those spots can definitely make a difference for finding a leak. Now, even doing all of that, it can be very frustrating when you can't pick up where that leak is at. So we do have some other tips you can do as well. Sometimes you'll see leaks that only appear in the high side while the system is running under its highest pressure conditions. Well, we have two pressure readings. We have a low side pressure rating for the low side and a high side pressure rating for the high side. That low side pressure rating is meant to protect this fusite on the compressor itself. So we can't really pressurize it to that high side unless we take some other things to account. What we can do is close the valve off right here on our liquid line. The problem is we can't pressurize it at all because now all of our gauges and our nitrogen pressure will be going towards our indoor coil. So what we have to do is actually put a connector, a brace connector, service port behind or this side of this valve. Once we put a service port here and we close this valve off, now we can pressure test the high side up to the highest pressure rating of the equipment. This equipment is rated up to 300, but on other equipment, especially 410A systems, it goes much, much higher than that. So let's say it says 400 PSI, 500 PSI, we can pressurize it up to whatever that high rating is. Now we have the high side pressure through all of the condensing cool, all the way up to the discharge side of the compressor, and we're able to have that extra pressure to help us find those high pressure leaks under those circumstances. So some little tricks you can do to help you find those leaks a whole lot easier. And there's tons more. As you go through time, you'll figure out your own tricks and your own shortcuts. But these are the things I do. I start from the most likely places first and then go deeper and deeper and deeper. And depends on how much time you have, you can then pressurize it up with nitrogen separately and look for a leak in the condensing cool with that whole lot of extra pressure. But again, make sure you take your time and you shut the power off to the equipment before you do any other work. Follow all your OSHA safety guidelines and safety glasses and gloves and space suits, whatever it takes for you to be safe. Follow all safety recommendations first. But doing some of these steps will help you understand how to find those leaks, what caused those leaks, how to prevent those leaks, and help you make some money, hopefully save the customer some money.